Hi, this is Heidi coming to you from the Digital Media Studios in the Launchpad at Indian Trails Public Library. I'm really excited for a chance to present DIY beeswax, beeswax wraps to you. That's really hard to say. But before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about what is available in the Launchpad, even though our doors are currently closed. Launchpad on the Go Kits are available to ITPLD card members and our 3D printing services are available to all members who have registered their library card at Indian Trails Public Library. We'll leave a link in the description box below that directs you straight to our Launchpad page for more information about the Launchpad on the Go kits that are available, as well as instructions about how to go about submitting your 3D print. I also recommend that you keep an eye on our calendar we have lots of great programs coming up virtually, and that's the best place to find out what they are and to register. Also, subscribe. make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be kept up to date on all the videos that we're adding. It's great to see you, even if it's virtually, and I hope that you have a great time with our program. Now on to the show. For this project, you'll need 100% cotton fabric. I've cut these down to a 7 by 7 inch square and a 10 by 10 inch square. You can choose a size and shape that works best for you. The next item you'll need are beeswax pellets. You can buy beeswax in bricks and shave them down to size, but I found pellets are easier to work with. You should look for wax labeled as cosmetic grade or food safe. Next on our list is 100% jojoba oil. Also look for something cosmetic grade or food safe. Next, you'll need parchment paper and an iron. Check in the description box for a link to a list of supplies and links where you can buy these items. Now it's time to get our space ready to work. You'll need some type of iron safe surface like an ironing board. In the launch pad, we have these iron safe mats that are heat resistant and protect the table. You'll also need an old towel or some layers of waste fabric to cover your surface to absorb any excess wax that may escape from your parchment paper as you're working. Finally, you should have your iron plugged in and turned on heating to the cotton setting, or if you don't have a cotton setting, the medium high heat. Make sure that your steam setting is turned off or make sure there's no water in the iron so it doesn't steam. Now that your workspace is ready to go, lay out a piece of parchment paper and one of your fabric squares. You'll want to take your beeswax pellets and start sprinkling them over the top of your fabric. You can break any of the larger pieces down as you go. You want an even spread of pellets over the fabric. Don't worry if you use too little or too much of the wax pellets. If you don't use enough wax, you can always add more later, and if you use too much, you'll be able to press out the excess as you work. Like many craft projects, there is always some amount of testing and practice before you get your process just right. Don't be afraid of making mistakes along the way. It's all part of the learning process. Once the beeswax is on the cloth, it's time for the jojoba oil. If you have a regular bottle, you can sprinkle some of the oil over the top, or if you have a dropper, like this, add drops across your fabric. The reason we're adding jojoba oil is to add pliability to the beeswax after it cools and sets. Without the oil, your beeswax would split and crack when you fold or crumple the wrap. Now that you've placed your beeswax and jojoba oil, it's time to top it off with your second sheet of parchment paper. Now you'll take your hot iron and press it over the top of your parchment and fabric to start melting the wax pellets. Once the pellets have started to melt down, work from the middle of your fabric to press the wax out towards the edges. I like to stop during this process to look closer at my fabric and see which areas are damp and which are still dry. 
place your iron back down and continue pressing to melt any remaining pellets. Let's stop and take another look. It looks damp here in the middle and as we move outward, but I still have a few dry spots out here on the corners and sides. So I'm going to push some of the excess melted wax out towards those edges and see if I can get some coverage on the dry spots. At this point, it seems like there just isn't enough excess wax to get to those spots. Put your iron to the side, grab your beeswax, lift the parchment paper, and take a few more pieces of wax and place them on the edges where you need them. Replace the parchment, melt the wax with your iron, and then push the wax out to the sides, covering up those dry spots. Repeat this process with any spots you find that are still dry. This time I didn't have so much excess wax that it pushed out past my parchment paper onto my towel, but that can happen, which is why I recommend placing an extra layer between your project and your ironing surface. Before this completely sets, let's press it out one more time to make sure it's still warm. While it's still warm, you want to peel off the top layer of parchment paper, making sure your fabric sticks to the bottom parchment paper. Then peel off your fabric and you can give it a little shake to help cool it off. After this process, I like to hang my fabric somewhere to dry so it can finish cooling and the wax can set. Once our wrap has cooled and set, I'll be back to talk about some potential issues, how to make a wrap if you don't have an iron, and usage and care of your wrap. Here's our finished wrap. You may notice that some of the colors have run during the process. I always recommend that you wash and dry your fabric before using it in your project. I did that with this fabric, but unfortunately, during the ironing process, the melted wax did transfer some of the dye. This doesn't affect the functionality of the wrap, but may not make it the most aesthetically pleasing. If this is something that bothers you, in the future you can choose fabrics that have a darker background so you don't notice any dye transfer, or pick something that has a single color. Another issue you may have is getting wax on your iron during the pressing process. You want to make sure to clean the wax off before the next time you iron so you don't get any of the wax or oil on your clothing. To clean your iron, go ahead and press it against a piece of scrap cloth or your towel while the iron is still hot. Rubbing it over the fabric will help remove any of the melted wax. Once your iron has cooled, if you notice any residue from the jojoba oil, go ahead and use a dishcloth to apply some vinegar to your iron and then wipe it off. This will help remove the residue and keep clothes clean the next time you iron them. If you'd like to do this project but don't have an iron, you're in luck. All you'll need is an oven and a baking surface like a cookie sheet. You may want to use an old dish towel or layers of scrap fabric on the cookie sheet to catch wax runoff. Then build your wrap sandwich like we do when using an iron. Lay your parchment paper, fabric, beeswax pellets, jojoba oil, and top with another sheet of parchment paper. Place this in a preheated oven set to the lowest temperature, approximately 150 to 200 degrees, for about three minutes. Keep an eye on your project so it doesn't get overheated. Once the wax is melted, remove the sheet from the oven. If necessary, you can press the wax with a rubber spatula to help even it out and distribute through your fabric. 
This process may take a few extra tries between heating in the oven and pressing it out. Once the fabric is evenly saturated and while it's still warm, peel away the top layer of parchment, then your fabric, and wave or hang to cool and set. Now it's time to talk about different ways to use your wrap. These are just a few ideas and I encourage you to search online for more inspiration. To get started, you can crumble up your wrap or hold it in your hands to warm up the wax and make it more pliable so it can form and take whatever shape you need it. One way I like to use these wraps are as pouches or envelopes for small snacks or pieces of produce like berries. Just fold and press your wrap into a pouch or envelope shape. Use the warmth of your hands to help the fabric stick together. Pop it open and then pour in something like these little goldfish crackers. Next, fold down the top to seal. Then it's ready to take a ride in someone's lunch bag or backpack. Another way to use your wraps is to cover containers like jars or bowls. So let's pretend we have a little bowl of blueberries here that need to go back in the fridge. Go ahead and warm that wrap in your hands to loosen it up. Then place it over the top of your container, pressing it down over the sides and holding in place for a moment to conform to the container. Then it's ready to go in the fridge until you're ready to eat the rest of your berries. These bigger wraps can go over larger containers and bowls, or use them in place of plastic wrap or bags to wrap a sandwich, leftover pieces of cheese, or larger pieces of cut produce like an onion. One thing you don't want to use these wraps for is wrapping items like raw meat. We won't be able to clean them well enough to get all the residue or bacteria off of them. Also, make sure to remove your wraps from your containers before placing them in the microwave oven or exposing them to heat as this will damage your wrap. Finally, let's talk about how to properly care for your wrap to get the most out of its lifespan. When properly taken care of, a beeswax wrap can last for about a year. To clean your wrap, use a cool, damp cloth or sponge to gently wipe your wrap. Be careful not to scrub your wrap as this can damage and strip the wax coating. You can use a mild dish soap if necessary. Don't soak or run warm or hot water over your wraps as this could melt or ruin the wax coating. Cool water is all you need. To store your wraps, fold and place them in a cool, dry place away from heat sources. As you use your wraps, you may notice that the coating begins to take on wrinkles or lines. Don't worry, like humans, this is a perfectly normal part of the aging process of your wrap. You'll know when your wraps are getting close to the end of their lifespan when the wax coating becomes thin or non-existent in spots. When it's time to say goodbye, take a moment to think of all the single-use plastic you've saved in the lifetime of your wrap. One last note on the care and keeping of your wraps. I have seen people online mention that you can give new life to your old wraps by repeating the ironing process we use to make them. I haven't had my wraps for that long, so I can't confirm it, but it may be worth the experiment if it means saving your wrap and using it a little bit longer. Thank you for joining me for this DIY beeswax wrap tutorial. You can stop now or stay tuned for some bonus content. I'll be sharing another method to create a slightly different variation of the beeswax wrap. For this version of beeswax wraps, we'll be adding another ingredient to our beeswax pellets and jojoba oil. Tree resin, also known as rosin. The resin adds a little extra bit of stickiness to the wrap so it adheres to itself a little better. The first version of our wraps worked just fine, but this will kick them up a notch. Because we're using resin, which has a higher melting point than wax, we'll need to use the stove to get the job done. In addition to the resin, you'll also need a cooking vessel to heat up water, like a saucepan, and something to make a double boiler. In this case, I recommend a ball jar. You'll need a stick to stir. Takeout chopsticks like this work perfectly. 
and you'll need a paintbrush, which we'll use later to apply our wax. To get started, we'll need to add enough water to come up a few inches up the side of our jar. Just about like that. And then we'll need to bring the water to a boil. Remove the jar before turning the burner on. While the water comes to a boil, let's move over here and begin adding our ingredients. You'll need about one and a half tablespoons of the resin. The finer it's broken down, the easier it is to melt. You can find just resin powder online, but mine came in chunks. You'll also need about two tablespoons of beeswax pellets. And finally, you'll need about half a teaspoon of jojoba oil. I'm going to eyeball it here. And that looks like just about the right amount. If you take a closer look at the jar, you'll notice there's already some wax residue here from my test samples. This is a reminder to not use a jar or container for your double boiler that you plan to use in the future for anything besides melted wax, since you might not be able to get all the wax and residue out of your container. Now we're going to let this water finish coming to a boil, and I'll be back when it's time to move on to the next step. Now that our water has come to a boil, I can lower the heat. Since we're working with the stove, it's important to use safe practices while handling these materials. Next, lower the jar with wax pellets, resin, and jojoba oil into the hot water. Make sure to use an oven mitt or pad to hold your jar, and keep a close eye out and don't walk away while you're melting your wax down. Resin is flammable, and while it's not likely to catch on fire in this way, we don't want to test those odds out. Using your chopstick or skewer, stir the contents of the jar until they've melted down into a liquid. Let's give this a few final stirs. Now that the wax and resin have melted down, we can turn off the heat and remove our jar. Go ahead and set it aside so it's ready to paint onto our fabric. Similarly to the first version of the beeswax wrap, I have my workspace set up with a heat resistant pad, towel, parchment, and fabric. Off to the side is my iron heating up to the cotton setting or medium-high heat, whichever your iron may have, and no steam. Now I'll take the jar of liquid wax, resin, and jojoba oil we just made and go in with my paintbrush so we can begin applying it to our fabric. Starting in the middle and using short brush strokes, begin to paint the wax mixture from the center out. Keep going into the wax mixture with your brush as needed and continue to work in the same short strokes until you've covered all of the fabric with the liquid wax. You will see the wax begin to set up on your fabric as it cools. Don't worry because we'll take care of this once we're finished painting all of our fabric. Now that you've covered all of the fabric with the liquid wax, it's time to iron our fabric. Top it with a second sheet of parchment paper. And starting from the middle with your iron, press the mixture out to the sides to evenly distribute the wax and press the excess out of your fabric. Make sure to check for any dry spots. Since we painted our wax on this time, you should have fewer or no spots, but it's always good to check those edges and corners. Once you've evenly pressed the wax through your fabric, set aside your iron, and while it's still warm, carefully peel away the top layer of parchment. Then peel your fabric away from the bottom layer of parchment. Shake the fabric out to cool, and then you'll be able to hang it somewhere off to the side to let the wax finish setting. 
And that's our bonus second method to make your own beeswax wraps. Thanks for joining me. We look forward to the time when we can welcome you back into the launch pad. Until then, happy making everyone.